Hello, everybody. Welcome to yet again another episode of Fabulous Little Stoke on the Podcast. It's me, your boy, your man, it's Eon, coming in again for episode 15. Wow, son, we've come a long way, and I have two very, you know, special and important guests here with me today. These are members of the Forever Slow Stroke Investment Group. We have Bria. She calls herself Big Bria. And we got my man Tyler right here. Hey, everyone. Right. So we about to get into some stuff. We're going to talk to y'all about, you know what I'm saying, new trade experiences. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of stuff. And then we're going to also get into some uh, very important um, uh, information about plan options. Of course, the hidden gems, and then we're going to talk about, you know what I'm saying, my progress for the week so far. It's Friday, so it's not over. There's still more money to come. So let's get right into it. So this episode is called Forever Slow Stroke and Feedback. Obviously, it's self-explanatory, right? Valid. All right, cool. So let's get right into it. All right, so I have two questions for each of my members. There are a total of, what, plus 30 in the group so far so these are just two these are the very 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 uh active two in the group they make moves they they speak up they in all the meetings everything like that is valid is valid is valid so all right son so i'm gonna start with bria because she really wanted to take her time and <laughs> and write and write down all this stuff so bria what are the two most challenging obstacles that you face as a new trader Okay, so my two, I feel like, most challenging. I mean, you speak up. My two most challenging obstacles. Making conscious decisions um, without emotion, really. Yeah, yeah. That's that's difficult. And um, also reading your charts effectively, like interpreting them right so you don't make a wrong move. Okay, I can see that. I can see that. That's valid, that's valid, that's valid. So as far as the charts, you know, it takes time to learn the charts. You gotta learn the candlesticks, then you gotta learn the different indicators, then you gotta learn the the averages, the moving averages, the simple moving averages, exponential moving averages, all this stuff is it's so much to learn. Um so yeah, pay attention to that. I always teach y'all never trade based off of your emotions. Don't trade on how you feel, trade on what you know. If you know that, you know what I'm saying, this is a valid, you know, company, you know you got a good entry, then focus on that. Really, really go based off of that. Don't go based off, oh, I think it's good. Somebody told me it would be good. What did you study for yourself? What did you know for yourself? You feel me? So that's important equally versus just going, oh, I need to make my money back. That's not a good way to live. So I, I'm going to ask Tyler the same question. Tyler, two most challenging obstacles that you faced as a new trader. I feel like my biggest one is risk management, and that can be with either securing, like when determining um, when to pull out, and that can either be okay. securing profits, like if a company, say, reaches a 52-week high, you feel like it may go down, so you can go ahead and secure your profits, right. and if it does drop, you can buy back in if you want, or also it could be if a company goes down, <laughs> <laughs> and Go ahead. Um, if you can and, and take your losses like when to determine to take your losses like i've been there sometimes where <laughs> i didn't take my losses and the, <laughs> the contract inspired on me like i didn't make anything from it worthless but zero man. i learned i learned from mistakes so that's that's just you live and you learn that's um, that's that that's that and my second one i feel like is um stock trends when to buy into a stock um like um, the like, if is a company overbought or is it underbought, and also determining like it, the trend of like if it's going down, when is the proper time to buy in? Like, is it gonna keep dropping or is it gonna eventually go up? So I'm still learning that. Yeah, I mean that's equally important. Like the same as hers, like risk management. You know what I'm saying? That ties in, kind of ties into you know what I'm saying, playing emotionally, like. You focused on, oh, I need it to go to $100 and not $98. It could go up two more dollars. You, you just like, all right, son, well, if I just made $1,800 off it, why do I have to make 2000 Like, let me just take this cool $1,800. It's already ran up so much. Like, son, let me just get out at this profit. And that's something my dad teaches me all the time. We literally talked about that joint yesterday for like 25 minutes. So, yeah, son, that's valid. And then... Dang, son. What else did you talk about? Oh, yeah. yeah stock trends. Yeah. When, the, when the buy in. Right. So that, like a sniper entry, it takes time to learn that. That goes back to 
understanding the charts. Like, all right, son, I know this candlestick is telling me that, all right, this type of movement is going on. So let me just pay attention. Let me watch a little longer and maybe, you know, my predictions will come true or I will be proven wrong. So that's another thing. You got to look at it um, from both sides. So it's not just looking at it like, oh, yeah, yeah, it's it's going up. But it's like, dang, son, how far is it going to go up? How much longer can it go up? You feel me? So so these are good things to pay attention to. All right, next question. Two positives about joining the Forever Slow Stroking investing group. I'm a, yeah, I'm just going to Bria. Go ahead, Bria. All right, two positives. I feel like it's effective communication always. Um, anybody can ex answer your question, really. Like, you never left in the dark about anything. You know, if you got a question, somebody gonna help you out. Um, number two, I feel like it's a lot of other, like, strong people in a group, um, which is good. Cause you know, can't do it all alone. Yeah, yeah, I can't <laughs> definitely can't do it by myself. Like, it's, it's yeah, difficult. so yeah, so there's a lot of resources in the group. You know what I'm saying? Like obviously, like because got to be able to to help people even when you're not available. So that's why I have like those extra resources there. I have some other, you know what I'm saying? Um, experienced, you know, traders and investors in there, and they know the difference between a trade and an investment opportunity. So that's valid as well. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that's that's important. I like that. I like that. All right, Tyler, same joint, same one for you. All right, so I feel like mine's is, um, it touches with Bria, um, knowledge. So I came in forever slow stroking, clueless. Like I didn't know anything about And he stocks. was like, he was like one of the like, first two people in the group. Yeah, so I didn't know anything about stocks. Now I'm starting to learn line charts, candles, candlestick charts. I'm learning like the information, like candlestick charts. You you can see so much more information than just the basic line. Right. I started off with Robin Hood, just use, looking at the line chart, seeing <laughs> they go up and down. But right. now I can actually read the information on it. And also, E is teaching me um how to do analy analytic and an <laughs> analysis. Analysis. <laughs> and, and, and so, um, like, it's, it's helping out a lot. Yeah. And um, my second one, of course, would be the earnings. It's not about profit, though, but it's always about doing a good trade. Like, he, right. he does a lot with um, analysis. Like, he, he is not just a, a decision he makes in one minute. He actually reviews the stock, determines if it's a good a good investment or not. Yeah. So we, we like to see good trades. Yeah, so it's, I'd rather have a good trade than to... Then to have a profit that I don't understand, like, I mean, because that profit that you don't understand, it can only happen rarely, you know, that is not something that's always going to happen. But if you know why you made your profit and you know why you lost your profit, then you know what you're doing. Like, you'd be like, well, sometimes it just gives you the opportunity to go back like, thanks, son. All right, let me go back and see what did I do wrong with? What was not valid, son? Like, <laughs> I'd be like, dang, so what happened? Like, FedEx, I was like... I was like, where's my fifty thousand dollars? <laughs> <laughs> but son, in actuality, it was implied volatility. So, I mean, on the contract. So, I mean, that's that was something I learned. I know what I'm doing now. Like, I, I get it. So, all right, thank you for that feedback, Bree and Tyler. Um, now, Bria and Tyler. Now, playing earnings. This is something I want to talk about. Playing earnings. Typically, you know, you know, back in the day, before COVID, <laughs> when a company beat earnings, you know what I'm saying, the price goes up, you know, and, and people go crazy, people start buying or whatever like that, people start investing because they believe it's a good company, and then eventually it'll die down. Nowadays, a company beat earnings, that joint might not even go up, it might not move, or it just might go straight down, like... This happened yesterday with Costco. You know what I'm saying? Costco be earnings, and when they reported the earnings, they did not go up. Why didn't they go up? You gotta understand earnings. You gotta understand what's going on. The reason they didn't go up because they didn't give any forward guidance. Uh, they report the earnings price. You know the earnings. You know what I'm saying? What did they earn per share? They report that, and then like an hour later. Or 30 minutes later, they'll have the actual earnings call. A lot of people just pay attention to what they report. They don't get on the call to see the forward guidance. They don't get on the call to see what the company bought, to see what the company, you know what I'm saying, lost, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Like, all this stuff is important. You have to pay attention to that when you're looking at earnings. Like, because if you play earnings by the week, 
every every different company, you know, every week on an earnings tip, then you might just always be a constant loser because you don't know what you're doing. You don't know what you're looking at. So that's something to pay attention to. I mean, in addition to that, the market itself is not valid. So we have a weak market. Like if the market goes up, there's something that's pushing the market up, but we don't know how long it'll stay up. So that's another thing you kind of got to pay attention to. Like, all right, well, the market is up, but how long can it stay up? You feel me? Like, so if a company is not that great of a company, but they beat earnings, it's like, all right, well, the market ain't strong enough to hold this company up. Like, it'll probably just fall. So you got to understand that. That's another thing you got to pay attention to when you're trying to mitigate your risk. Um, so I put up three little suggestions for you guys. One, find a profit and secure it. If you plan earnings, you know what I'm saying? If you have day trades available and you, you see a profit is valid for you, you don't be like, oh, I know tomorrow to be this. Like, son, like, nah, go ahead. Just take your money. You know what I'm saying? Like, I was up 250 on, uh, what is this called? Um, Costco yesterday. I was like, eh. I wanted to take the profit, but I had no day trades. So, I can't, it was nothing I could really do. But I was like, all right, son, so let me just go ahead and see what happens tomorrow. I didn't really have a choice, so that's a different story. Another thing. Number two, um, play up to earnings. You don't have to necessarily play through earnings. You can play up to earnings, like Zoom. Zoom went wild up into earnings, but then at earnings, Zoom went crazy again. Uh, but DocuSign went wild up to earnings, but then when earnings came, DocuSign kind of wasn't that you know valid. It was kind of kind of fluked a little bit. Same with FedEx. FedEx ran up into earnings, but... It was kind of fluke after earnings, but well, on the option side, contract side, but um, yeah, and that's something to pay attention to. You know what I'm saying? Play up to earnings. You don't always have to play through earnings. You just you know the company's going to do good. People are excited about this company. Let it run up, and then sell it before. I mean, if you miss profit later, then oh well, oh well. But you secure profit instead of potentially taking the loss. That's valid. You know what I mean? And then uh, number three. Find similar companies. This is this is like a little secret. I didn't tell people this, but you find similar companies with closely approaching earning dates, like FedEx. If I'm gonna play FedEx, I'm looking at UPS too. Same type of business, same industry, different company though. They both do well. Both are in demand. So when I play my FedEx, I always buy a UPS contract with it. Because if FedEx goes up and be earnings, UPS is going to go up too. When FedEx and FedEx beat, you know what I'm saying, I made good money off of UPS. You know what I'm saying? When UPS beat, I'll probably make good money off of FedEx. But I probably won't play FedEx with UPS. But I might. I don't know. I got to see how I feel that day. Not how I feel, but I got to see what the charts are looking like. I got to see what everything. I got to do some analysis on it. Really, really double back and um, no check before I just start moving all crazy. But yeah, those are the three things. All right, so let's get into hidden gems. Um, nah, nah, that's, let's not even go there. Hold on, y'all. I, I got to I pull this up. All right, so let's talk about where we are now. As far as my, and every week, my trading goal is 20% profit on options every play and 10% profit on shares every play. For this week so far, ending in today, uh, you know, September 25th, 2020, I made $35 profit from LAC, $16 profit from OPES, $30 profit from Workhorse, $177 profit from SQQQ, $85 profit from UPS, $130 loss from FMGI, $13 profit from Crocs, $1,300 profit from Nike, $20 profit from Walmart, $20 profit from Party City, $700 profit from SQQQ, $200 loss on Big C, and $5 profit from Neo. That's all that I have so far. We're going to see how that joint ride out, you know what I'm saying? And then today, I might put the rest of the stuff in the next episode. Um, if I have any wins or losses, but y'all y'all catch that joint. Um, Hidden Gem. You can play the same company over and over again. You don't have to just do it once, son. You could learn that company, keep doing it over and over again. Zoom. I'm going to say Zoom. Look at Zoom. I'm gonna play. I'm gonna start playing Zoom more often. You can play this joint over and over and over and over again, son. Just learn the price movement. Learn, learn what Zoom goes to. And I'm gonna also give you this because I'm a I'm a decent person today. 
try to cop zoom under 450. If you could cop zoom under 450 on the contract side, you, my friend, would be valid. And that's all that I have for you all. Thank you so much for tuning in. Don't forget, you know me. Like and subscribe. Join the Forever Slow Stroking Trading Group if you would like to. Just hit me up, son. You know you can contact me. And don't forget that Forever Slow Stroking, we going legit. You know what I'm saying? We're now at LLC. And we are federally trademarked. So thank you all for your support. And I hope that everybody is blessed, prosperous, and productive. You know what I'm saying? Throughout the trading week. And I guess I'll just holler at y'all tomorrow because I got stuff to do. You know me. And